hey guys super excited to have you here once again today we are looking at a concept in python called ax and quarks basically we are going to extract this concept and look at we are going to look at uh, what it stands for what they mean and after that we jump right into our jupyter notebook and we are going to work things out meanwhile please support us like subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up to encourage and promote this content we are making basically ax and quarks are special parameters that in python that allows you to pass a variable number of arguments into a function what exactly do we mean by that by variable number of arguments we are talking about when you are creating a function in python and you do not know beforehand the number of argument the number of parameters that will be passed into that function and the corresponding number of arguments that that function will be called with you are going to use ax and quark to do that let me illustrate this concept to you so that you better understand what i'm talking about let's say this concept you look at this function right we define the function here called sum and we pass three parameters into our function num1 num2 num3 and when we are call it that function here we pass the same number of parameters we pass the same argument to that function during the function call here we knew beforehand the number of parameters that function need and we use the same number of argument to call that function if i come here to add another argument the code is not going to work because the number of parameters during the function definition is different from the number of argument i'm calling the function with it's not going to work in that way all right so that is not going to print um the result that we expect so you see um takes three positional argument but four we are giving that's an error so what you are going to do in this instance what is going to help you is to use ax or quarks because you do not know beforehand the number of arguments that that function um, is going to take. So that is why we are looking at um, this concept of ax and quarks. An argument is a value that is sent to a function when it is called. I kind of differentiated between parameters and argument. When you are defining a function, basically, like we have here, you see, we are defining a function here. As you can see, what we have here are called parameters. Let me uh, make it bolder so that we'll see what we are talking about. Basically, num1, num2, num3 in the function definition are called parameters. But if you come down here during the function call, these values that are passed to the function during the call are called arguments. So that is basically the difference between parameters and argument so the argument is passed during the function call basically so that is what uh we have um here so an argument is a value that is sent to a function when it is called i believe you understand that so what are ax ax basically like i said earlier stand for argument and the par the parameters allow allow you to pass a variable number of positional or non-keyword argument to a function if we say what we have here is what basically differentiates um the the args from quarks from the keyword argument so variable number of arguments you do not know you 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 do not know beforehand the number of argument you want to pass to your function so you can um define um you can pass you can use the ads during your function definition and you do not have to specify the number of parameters and you can call it with any number of arguments in the function call so ads are passed as tuples talking about tuples i'm going to show you out to uh, more like an example of uh, what you what we have before now talking about tuples so what are tuples we did that here and basically what i want you to take note of uh, you can't append or add items to a tuple they are similar to a list you already know that and you cannot modify the values 
of a topo so this is a topo you can print you can call your topo it's going to print what you have but take note of this that is what um i want you to um get from from here so basically this is what we uh, mean by art so let's let's jump into uh, code blocks so that we can we can create one right i believe you're anxious to do that so ask let me um, create a function using the keyword def so i'll call my function add and what we are doing in this function we want to use the add that we talk about the app parameter that we talk about so take note that in your definition that the asterisk is very important so you pass it in front of the args which just like this you pass it in front of it so i'm just going to do that and uh, after that definition i'll define a variable and this i'll initialize the value to zero and i'll use a for loop for use another variable called n in r in args that the args remember that we use in the function definition just here right so then i'm going to use sum and sum equal to sum plus n all right so what this is talking about is that for n in args okay the number of um the numbers or the number of items we want to add in this argument okay then if it starts with zero remember we initialize sum to be zero so if it starts with zero plus n plus the next item plus the next item just like that and at the end of the day you are going to uh, put whatever result you get in some of those numbers you want to add you're going to store them in the variable called sum i believe you understand that so we are going to go back here to print out we're going to print out the value of sum so just do this sum so okay then i want to print out my sum all right so then i'll go back here to to call this function then i'll pass my argument to this function so i just want to add these numbers one two and three all right so i'll pass that as an argument to the function all right so as you can see it's going to print this result it's going to print first sum then it's going to add these numbers one two and three and it's going to bring that result i believe you can see this uh, so it's going to sum that these numbers and it's going to um, bring out that result as you can see here so not just this i can go ahead and do more i could have two comma four let me sum all of these six eight i could close that um shift enter so it's going to print some 20 so the result of this will be printed you can add as many as possible so basically um i'm going to call i'm going to use i'm going to have create another function from what we have here let me just uh, copy this i'm going to create another function this time i want to prove to you that it is not compulsory to use ax here okay you can use any variable of your choice you must not use arg here all right let me create another one so this time instead of using args i'm going to use norms okay stand for numbers norms but ensure that you put this asterisk this asterisk sign is very important to be here so this time um i'll use a different variable total i'm going to use total initialize it again to zero and take note that for okay this time i'll just do num here instead of n i'll use the variable num here all right it's just a matter of preference and take note instead of using ax here yeah ax i'm going to use the norms which i use in here all right i'm going to use this num here so then i'm going to do um total i'll use total here meanwhile i'm going to show you something shortly total equals to total plus n 
like i explained earlier take note that you can as well write this as you can do this but you can as well write this as this is a long um you can have a shortcut you can do total plus equals which also represent what we did earlier so total equals total plus equals norm so it's the same thing it's just the short form of what we did earlier so um going to do here okay let's um do something else i'm going to use the keyword return all right return total so instead of printing I'll, i'm returning a value so at the end of the day i'll go ahead to call this function so let's call this function i'll do print and let's use another function name let's say some some norm all right let's use another function name some norm so i'll come here and some underscore norm i'm going to do that just like so and then i'll go ahead to put the arguments into the function let's say one of some one two three four five and six all right so i'm going to close that okay i'm adding two um bracket to that so you can see we define the function called sum we use the ag that we talked about argument all right because we want to pass a variable number of argument as you can see how many arguments are here during the function call one two three four five six we pass six argument to this function so we must not um define that during the function definition we just use our asterisks to show that this is an arg so um we use a for loop here for norm in norms total sum this means total equals to total plus norm then we are returning total then we call this function with a variable number of argument so i'm going to just go ahead and print this so as you can see guys it's going to print out 21 which is the sum of all of these numbers which is the sum of all of these numbers so basically um that's the difference uh take note that like i said earlier you must not use ax here it's not compulsory okay so whatever variable that you want to use you have that freedom to use it and uh, provided you are adding the asterisk the asterisk is going to tell um the computer that you are, you want to use an arg or if uh, a, a the arg parameter okay so so let's talk about quarks like i said earlier quarks simply stands for keyword argument and what are they they are it's used to pass a variable number of keyword arguments to a function the argument is passed as a dictionary basically more like a big book like you know your normal dictionary where you go to look up the meaning of items right so the same way quarks which are keyword argument they act just the same way as you have your dictionary you have a couple of things saved there you can go there to access items you can look up the menu of items then you have them displayed or you go ahead to read these items so the same way you can store items using your keyword argument all right using the quarks then you can come back to reference those items so i'll just go ahead in, in the same manner i'll create an, a function here use it dev keyword then i'll just call that fun uh, the name of my function will be uh, my info just like so meanwhile you can come here and do quarks all right but it's not important what is compulsory is that you have that two asterisk that is to tell the computer that you are talking about keyword argument which is quarks you want to use that parameter so i could go ahead i have the freedom to you know use any a variable i want to use so i'll call it um i'll go ahead to call it um let's say data okay i'm cool with that i'll call it data you can choose anything any um variable you want to use so i'll come here then i'll just do print like so then uh basically i want this to be printed in a new line so i'll do new line then do data i'll explain this later on to progress then data type of argument that type of argument then 
just going to do this and I'll close that that uh, that um that off then i'll do type type of data type of data all right then after then i'll just come down here to you know use a a for loop for key value in data right data does i'm going to explain this as we progress then i'll go ahead to print we are using the uh, formatted string all right that is what that curly braces represent okay so i'm just going to close this off and i'll do format then key and value because we are doing um, the key we we are talking about keyword argument we have the keyword and the value the keyword and the value so that's how um quad work quags work then i'll go ahead to you know call my function with the appropriate number of arguments so i'll do my e4 which is my function name then i'll pass my keyword take note the first one is the keyword first name that's a keyword then the value is what name should we use um let's say tech and then i'll do last name globe all right you can choose uh, whatever you want to use for that then let's say sex sex is a keyword take note then the value we want to pass to that male and okay let's just stop here for this then we have another one my e4 and again i'm just going to repeat most of these so let me just type it out first name Okay, what name should we use? Let's say Joe. Then we have last name. Let's say J. Then this time let's have different um, keyword and keyword value. Let's say well, we want to get the four contact phone. Then we could say nine zero four five three six seven six nine. Terry, please you don't have to. This is just a random number, please. So then let's say um, let's have another keyword country. Of course, Nigeria. So again, let's have one more keyword age let's say 30 years or 35 whatever okay so as you can see we created a function like i said and we use we are using quags para, quag parameter keyword argument so that is what these double asterisks represent okay you can you must not use quag here you can choose your variable so we want to print um the type of argument okay the type of data so type of data okay like we said like i showed you earlier the argument is passed as a dictionary meanwhile for ax they are passed as tuples right like i rightly said that earlier so the packs as dictionary so type of data you should know what to expect here so we use a for loop for key value in data uh, dot item so what we are um, trying to talk about here is that uh we want to reference the keyword this is the keyword if you look at the the argument when we are calling that function this is called the keyword and this is the value so keyword value right then keyword sex is the keyword 
then this is the value just like so you have keyword here okay i have to be consistent let me change this to lowercase keyword this is keyword value just like that and age is the keyword this is the value so take note of that so okay uh oh we have two here it's supposed to be one all right so okay we we are supposed to close this okay with two um bracket all right so better in that for key okay okay um just ensure that take note of the indentation is very important in python it if not it's going to throw an error let's see what error we have now dictionary object have no attribute item okay 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 it's supposed to be items sorry in data dot items so here we are supposed to have items so let's do shift enter all right so it's going to print that out so as you can see here we have data type uh, data type argument class so this type of data that we have here is going to print um basically the type of data right it's going to print the type of data and that type is what is dictionary like i said earlier so it's going to print that then the argument we have here we have two argument here passing to this function the form of a dictionary so you can see the information are saved like this this is the first one then this is the second one all right so this is the second one so this is the keyword argument like i explained earlier these are the key keyword these are the value sorry these are the keyword these are the value keyword value just like that so basically that is it from me guys in this video please like give it a thumbs up if you have any question drop it in the comment section 